So, Alice, please. Okay, okay. So, let me uh, start the second part. Actually, it's, it's called like this. The second part is what we stopped the last time. So, and today we'll talk about the JET uh, version of, of Q manifolds and Q bundles, and I will show how this related to gauge PDEs. And still, I will not talk about Lagrangians. It's another topic which is at least not least less interesting, but I will touch it maybe in the third lecture, which will take place somewhere. Okay, so uh, let me first give some brief introduction to jets. Uh, I think there, there are some people like Igor who knows this by heart, I guess, but still, uh, maybe some others not at all. Okay, let's assume that we have a fibroid bundle over X. Uh, uh, so the local description is that we have uh, uh, local coordinates, say X is on X, and some fiber coordinates U on E, and we call uh, coordinates X independent variables and coordinates uh, U dependent variables. Let us consider the space of K jets, uh, and then infinite jets of local sections uh, of this bundle pi. I just follow the notations of the Vinogradov school, which will denote usually not the total space, but by the, they usually use, use the letter which denotes the projection. Uh, so in fact, um, there are jet k's for all k from zero to infinity. J zero of pi is nothing but E. Uh, and then, uh, this will give us uh, a projective system, so that projections uh, from JK to JL for all K greater than L, and this is coherent, this, this is a projective system, we can take the projective limit, and there, then we obtain the infinite jets. Or in coordinates, we simply take uh, local derivatives uh, of sections up to K order or up to infinite order if it's J infinity of pi. So uh, given any local section, we do not by sigma k the corresponding k jet prolongation. Uh, and given any vector field v on the base, we have the total derivation along v, uh, which, which sends functions uh, on k jets to functions on k plus one jets. And it satisfies the following properties. So actually it, it uh, commutes with uh, the pullback by sigma K by the KJ prolongation. So uh, instead of acting by V on the base, we can act uh, by DV on the total space of the jet, jet bundle. Uh, so by constructing the space of infinite jets is closed under the action of DV, because DV sends JK to JK plus one. If you take the projective limit, it will send J infinity to J infinity. And suppose uh, the local coordinates the coordinates on the base are x alpha and u a, the local coordinates uh, on the fiber. Uh, then uh, we have the associated coordinate system on jk pi, which is x alpha c on the base and u i a. And this corresponds uh, basically to derivatives up to a certain order, up to order k. And i is some version of uh, symmet symmetric multi index. It can be. A, there are actually two different versions of uh, symmetric multi indices. And uh, in fact, X alpha can be, also, can be also super. And at some moment uh, in the talk, I will mention super jets. And then I is a super symmetric multi index. Uh, and now in these coordinates, uh, the total derivative uh, along XA uh, can be written as follows. So this is the total derivative along XA plus we differentiate along UA uh, and take you multiply with UA alpha and so on. So it's obvious how it acts. So the total lifting of derivatives, the lift of derivations on x by the total derivatives is first of all, it's linear with respect to multiplication functions on x. And second, it respects the deep bracket of vector fields. So in fact, uh, if the first property is holding, it's sufficient to say that the, uh, only the partial derivatives alone, uh, so the total derivatives alone basic coordinates are commuted. Uh, and in fact, it means uh, that we have uh, mm, a d module structure in some sense, or d algebra structure uh, using the language of Benson and Winter. Uh, so, this or uh, geometric it, it's a flex structure on the infinite jet bundle over X. So, uh, this is equivalent to existence of the Cartan distribution, which we denote by C calligraphic. And this is a horizontal and volusive distribution. Uh, 
uh, which is uh, which is uh, at the same time uh, an Erisman connection. So one can say that this is involutive Erisman connection in the jet infinite jet bundle over X. Uh, now, how is it related to the geometry of PDEs, partial differential equations? So, uh, a partial differential equation is normally is given by some set of, uh, some system of equations, um, at least locally it's given by uh, equations uh, HK, X, UI, where UI are precisely the jet coordinates, jet fiber coordinates, and K runs from one to some natural number, so there's some, so in general it's a system, or uh, it's locally a system, of course, globally it can be somehow fluid. Uh, a local section is a solution to HK. Uh, but if it's a solution to HK equals to zero, it's also a solution to D alpha HK equals to zero. So we can take the partial derivatives and if the identity, this identity holds for some sections, then it's also holds for any derivative. Then it means that in addition to this equation, we can at all infinite prolongation of the following sort. So we should take all partial, all total derivatives of any lens of HK and then add these equations to the original one. And usually one can find us finite uh, generators of this. So, uh, and like this, we, we obtain infinite prolonged differential PD. So uh, this gives some uh, subspace, um, or if it's smooth, it's a sub bundle. Uh, of j infinity pi. And then uh, you see that uh, the alpha of hk is again an equation. So it means that the ideal of function vanishing on this infinite pd is preserved by all the alphas. Geometrically, it means that uh, the corresponding subspace in jet infinity pi contains the Cartan distribution. So the Cartan distribution gives an involutive distribution on this subspace. And this leads to a geometrical formulation of PDEs uh, due to Vinogradov. I think it was formulated like this. So it's a pair of, uh, of some manifold uh, and some Cartan distribution. So it's involutive distribution. Uh, it should be called Cartan just by some historical reason. reason. And uh, we can also assume, it's not necessarily uh, the case, but we can also assume that uh, EX is a, local trivial bundle over X. Actually, it can be uh, infinite jets, for instance, of submanifolds. Then it's not uh, of the following form. But uh, in this talk, it will be like this. So it's locally trivial bundle over X. Uh, then uh, in the canonical projection uh, from CP, from the uh, Cartan uh, plane, Cartan subspace, uh, to, to the tangent uh, bundle is uh, is an isomorphism. Uh, okay, in particular, uh, C is of constant rank and its rank equal to the, equals to the dimension of X. So, uh, actually, do you hear me? Is it well? Because... Uh... Uh, yeah, we can Okay, hear. okay, nice. Because uh, I didn't hear any uh, any noise, so I decided that maybe I'm, I'm talking to... Okay, okay, so it's, it's fine, it's fine. It's totally fine. Maybe it's uh, very clear, I hope so. Uh, uh, so, uh, and normally we can also require that uh, this can be embedded into some jet bundle as, as a prolonged equation, at least locally. Because otherwise it's too general. If you can see the only general uh, bundles in, in, in volatile distribution, it will not give us a very rich theory. So it's also important that it's, uh, it can be represented as some differential equation. For instance, it gives some um, filtration on the space of functions. And then solutions of the PDE are sections of pi x of this bundle, which are tangent to the Cartan distribution. So all the integral submanifolds of the Cartan distribution. Uh, so uh, this means, uh, actually in fact, uh, we cannot call C uh, the Cartan distribution integrable because there is no, not only one leaf passing through one point. So one can easily show that in the case of uh, infinite jets, it's not integral, but just involutive. But still, we can still talk about leaves or integral, integral sub, sub manifolds of the Cartan distribution. Uh, and then every vector field, like, like before, uh, every vector field on X, it means canonical leaf to the total space. Uh, and this leaf is linear under multiplication on functions on X. Uh, and this respects uh, the bracket of vector fields. This gives uh, 
the D algebra structure, flat, flat structure. Uh, so uh, then we can de decompose all differential forms into horizontal uh, and vertical forms, and we obtain a differential DH on horizontal forms, uh, which we call the horizontal differential. So and, and in, in local coordinates, it always looks like that. So for the Durham differential, this would be the partial derivative with respect to alpha, and here the total derivative, and it, it's well-defined potentially. So uh, horizontal um, differential forms are actually uh, locally. This is nothing but a form. So it's, it's, it's spanned by dx alpha, but the coefficients now are functions on the infinite jet space instead of just the usual forms where the coefficients are functions on, on the base manifold. And then instead, instead of the partial derivatives, we take, take the total derivative. Uh, then uh, there is a nice super geometric interpretation of the cut structure. Uh, and it is the following. So uh, let us take uh, C um, shifted by one. So it's a super manifold. So actually C is a distribution over the infinite jet space. Now we shift the fibers of this distribution by one. We obtain a, a graded uh, manifold of degree one. And DH now becomes a Q structure on this graded manifold. And then uh, because the H uh, comes from the total derivatives, it's easy to see that this projection uh, is actually a Q bundle structure. Because DH, uh, just as we see, just covers, uh, D alpha covers partial Z uh, along X alpha. Uh, and then uh, it's easy to see that DH covers C. So it's a Q bundle. Uh, but in general, actually it's not uh, a locally trivial Q bundle. And one can show, for instance, if, so it's locally, it can be cannot be represented as the product of two Q bundles. And one can uh, show it uh, to Q manifold, sorry, and one can show this, for instance, it's not true for infinite jet spaces. Uh, it depends on what kind of um, functions we consider, but if it work uh, in local functions, so a function on the infinite jet space is a function on some finite jet space for some k, then uh, we cannot trivialize uh, this Q bundle as a Q bundle. Uh, so for instance, it's not true for ordinary jet space, it's regarded as empty differential equations. If it's possible to do, if it's locally trivial, then the corresponding PD is called the parameterization invariant. That's how we call this. Okay, uh, so, um, uh, um, um, so uh, you say that uh, you knew um, fine from the um, Vinogrado that you consider the Vinogrado theory in, in terms of the cool bundle. Now, yeah. cool bundle. There are some other, yeah, somehow we adapt the Vinograd of uh, theory for Q bundles, yes. Uh, so so such, a, uh, such a proposal in your paper with a uh, stroke or some uh, also. With Grigoriev, I guess. I, I know, I, I never seen such a, uh, how to say, um, because at least I, I, I have to say, I a little bit also know it is a people working in Vinograd of school, yeah, but uh -huh. I don't think that's as they consider like a Q bundle. Yeah, um, they they should understand it, I guess. Yeah. They either know or understand it at least. So if a PD of finite type, this is always reparameterization invariant. So it's locally trivial of Q as a Q manifold. But there are also some examples uh, of uh, PDs of not local finite type, which are still reparameterization invariant. For instance, uh, the Einstein equations of this sort. What does uh, finite type mean? Sorry? Ah, uh, what, what mean uh, uh, finite type? It, it, it means, uh, basically it means that it's, uh, the PD is a finite dimensional bundle. Like for instance, uh, any ordinary differential equation is a finite dimensional, can be regarded as a finite dimensional bundle. You can see. Maybe it's more clear to say that uh, the, uh, the solutions uh, at uh, any one point of the base manifold can only have uh, uh, jets living in a finite dimensional space. So finite amount of differential data at a point determines the entire solution. Yeah, that's, that's, this is, uh, yeah this, this is true what you say, of course. Uh, but uh, uh, okay, so uh, one sorry, can okay, say... Just, just, uh, yeah, uh, sorry, I'm just one can say like this. So we, we, if we take an infinite prolonged PD, it's, it's a bundle over X. Uh, and then if this bundle is finite dimensional, it's a fin finite order PD. But this is precisely what uh, 
uh, eager say so it's, it's another version of it but just to see that i understand so mm -hmm. uh, like for example uh, wave equation or laplace equation is not reparameterization invariant no according to this definition no Maxwell equation is not, and I will show this later. Actually, this will be an example of Maxwell equation at some moment, and also of not parameterization invariant. In fact, uh, so I will show later uh, what is a gauge PDE, and if gauge PDEs are coming from some, uh, if the gauge symmetries are coming from some transitive action on X, then uh, uh, it's not proven, but uh, I guess it's correct that it's always reparameterization invariant. For instance, if there are different morphisms, it's always reparameterization invariant. For instance, for, for the case of, uh, in the case of uh, Einstein equations, they're invariant under different morphisms, and then this is reparameterization invariant. But uh, for, uh, for instance, for Maxwell, uh, the gauge symmetries are only vertical and it's not. Uh, okay. So, uh, so let us consider PD as a bundle over X with the Cartan distribution. So it's, it can be viewed as an involutive uh, or flat Erisman connection uh, in some bundle over X. So pi X is the projection. So uh, then uh, there are vertical vector fields. Actually, there are vertical and horizontal vector fields, right? Because uh, C uh, is, can be viewed as an Erisman connection. It gives the splitting of the tangent space to the tangent bundle to Ex into the vertical and horizontal parts. The horizontal is precisely C, and the vertical is what is in the kernel of uh, d pi x, differential of the projection. So if you have a vertical vector field which preserves C, we call this an evolutionary vector field. And the evolutionary vector fields computes with dv for all fields, one can show it. Uh, and if it can be exponentiated, it's an infinitesimal flow, uh, is a different morphism uh, preserving the bundle structure and also preserve the Cartan distribution. Uh, so, uh, in particular, uh, so, so let, let's take uh, jet infinity of some bundle pi. Actually, it should be pi, pi not pi x. Uh, so, uh, before e x should be j infinity of some pi. Uh, then every evolutionary vector field, uh, which is again uh, vertical and preserving the Cartan distribution is uniquely fixed by its section on functions on uh, J0 or the total space of pi. So in coordinates, it means the following. So uh, since it's vertical, it must preserve uh, the local coordinates xi, and we know only how it acts. We should only know how it acts on fiber coordinates. And then if we know how it acts on just u alpha, we immediately know how it acts on high jet coordinates because u i alpha is nothing but dx i applied to alpha and v must commute with this so we know how it acts here so in fact it means that uh, uh, an evolutionary vector field in this case is generated by by the action of v on only u alphas and then we immediately know how it acts on on the jet space uh, so evolutionary vector fields can be viewed as infinitesimal symmetries of the corresponding pd in fact i did not write but uh, Whenever we have a vector field which preserves the Cartan distribution, it splits into the vertical and horizontal parts, and the horizontal parts is tangent to the Cartan distribution, and we somehow get rid of it. And the vertical part is always evolutionary. So uh, it means that uh, vector fields uh, preserving the Cartan distribution, in fact, uh, modular the horizontal part are the same as evolutionary vector fields, and they are viewed as symmetries of uh, uh, of the jet space and PDEs if they preserve the corresponding equation. Uh, in particular, gauge symmetries for local fields theory, theory for evolutionary vector fields. Uh, and uh, whenever we have a Cauchy resolution of a PDE, uh, then uh, this Cauchy resolution is itself uh, an evolutionary vector field of degree one. And they will give an example later of it. And then uh, Q manifolds uh, in the context of PDEs in the language of Vinogradov school, uh, where they talk about um, how's it called uh, defiates, right? Uh, uh, or using the language of the algebras, uh, which is uh, due to Billinson and Drinsley. Uh, then a Q manifold in this category uh, is a defiate or D the algebra together with some evolutionary vector field, uh, which is self commuting. Okay, so uh, one more. So suppose uh, 
we have a vector field on the total space of some bundle over X. Uh, then there is a canonical k jet prolongation uh, of v to jet k of pi for all k. Uh, and this means that we can take the prolongation to jet infinity. Uh, and these prolongations are compatible with the projections. Uh, and these prolongations preserve the Cartan distribution of jk pi. So the Cartan distribution of jk pi consists, uh, so this is, this is spanned by all uh, subspaces tangent to all uh, jet prolongations of sections. And if you take the infinite prolongation, this will be some vector, vector just some vector uh, field on jet infinity of pi, which preserve the Cartan distribution. And as I said before, it splits into two parts, horizontal and vertical. The vertical is necessarily evolutionary, and the horizontal is just tangent to the Cartan distribution. And then we know that Vk is just the restriction uh, of V infinity to jet k. So because the functions on jet k pi uh, are subalgebras of functions on jet infinity for all k, then if we have V infinity and we know that it preserves the uh, subspaces f, subalgebras uh, f, j, k, pi, then we can say that the k is infinitely fixed. Uh, then uh, this is actually equivalent to existence of canonical prolongation of v to c shifted by one, which is a q bundle over t shifted by one of x, which commutes with dh. So this is in one to one. Uh, in fact, uh, this is a general statement. We now we have uh, mm, some bundle with a flat Erisman connection, and there is a vector field on the total space of this bundle, which preserves uh, the Erisman connection. Then uh, it's in one to one with a vector field uh, on C shifted by one, where C is this Erisman connection, which commutes with the corresponding flat differential, dh. Uh, so, and how it looks in local coordinates. Suppose V is a vector field uh, on the total space of a bundle, so it can be written like this, so the sum of f alpha x u dx alpha plus g, or it should be a, uh, j a x u d u a. Uh, then, um, yeah, like this. Then the infinity uh, splits into the horizontal and vertical parts, uh, such that uh, the horizontal part uh, is uh, just this, uh, just spanned by the total derivatives. It's like this, and the vertical part is generated. Uh, so, uh, as we know, it's sufficient to know how it acts on u alphas and x, x on u, u, u a's and x on u, u a's like this. So, u alpha is okay. Just again, something. So, it should be should be a here. Uh, so, here u alpha a is the partial uh, total derivative of u a uh, along alpha. Uh, okay, so um, now what? Um, now let's let, let's consider the following example. Uh, now let's consider the following example: the jet Lie algebra. Uh, actually, it's it's interesting because it's interesting itself. It's related to uh, to the cohomology uh, and uh, to, to the Kagamo Lie algebra cohomology, and we'll see it, how is it related later. Uh, so let's take a Lie algebra over X. Uh, and let's consider uh, the k jet prolongation of this Lie algebra jet k of a. And this is again a Lie algebra uh, such that uh, the bracket is prolonged such that it commutes with the jet prolongation like this for all sections sigma and sigma prime of a. And the uh, anchor map again commutes with the jet prolongation. So if you take jet prolongation of sigma, apply uh, the anchor map the same as the anchor map of sigma. For instance, uh, as an example, if you take the standard Lie algebra Tx over x and they take j, j1 of Tx, then uh, j1 of Tx is uh, isomorphic to the T algebra of, of the GL principal bundle of tangent frames. But there are, of course, a lot of examples. For instance, uh, jet algebra is a very nice framework for describing infin uh, infinitesimal Lie equations of pseudo algebras. Uh, so let's consider Lie algebra as a Q manifold. So before, in, in the previous talk, I mentioned that uh, Lie algebra are in one-to-one -one with Q manifolds of degree one. Uh, then uh, A rho, and here the bracket, is identified, identified with the Q manifold A shifted by one QA, where QA, uh, okay, so both rho, sigma, and uh, uh, the anchor map and the bracket are de determined by QA, and Q, Q may is uniquely determined by 
uh, row and the bracket by use of the Cartan magic formula. Uh, this is the Weintraub result from 97. Uh, okay, let, let us uh, remark that functions on A shifted by one can be regarded as uh, uh, multilinear cachains, cachains on gamma A, on sections of A, which are multilinear with respect to functions on X, and takes values also in functions on X. So functions on X uh, is a module over A1, or functions, uh, uh, sections of A1, where sections of A1 are acting on functions by the anchor map, uh, and sections of A1 uh, are itself uh, a Lie algebra. Uh, so there's a particular uh, Cachains, particular chevalier ellenberg Cachains uh, on this Lie algebra. And moreover, the corresponding chevalier ellenberg differential uh, coincides with QA. So if you want to compute the, Q, uh, the Ellen, chevalier ellenberg cohomology, it's nothing but computing the QA cohomology uh, on functions of A shifted by 1. Now, what happens if we take uh, the jet algebra and consider it's a Q-manifold? So it's not surprising that this, is, uh, this works as follows. So we take uh, A shifted by one as a bundle over X, that take the jet prolongation, K-jet prolongation of this bundle, the K-jet prolongation of the corresponding QA, and we obtain the structure uh, of the K-jet uh, algebra. Or we can say that it's extended to C shifted by one, uh, such that it can use with DH. So uh, it's uh, remarkable that now we have a bicomplex. So uh, Q, the jet uh, in, or infinite jet prolongation, QA infinity, anti commutes with DH, because uh, for even vector fields, the jet prolongation will commute with DH, and for odd, it will anti commute. Uh, and also, uh, the jet prolongation respects the brackets, so it means if QA was uh, homological, then QA infinity is also homological. So in fact, we have the, the sum of two homological vector fields of degree one, and they're anti-commuting. So the sum is again a homological vector field. And moreover, uh, they are of degree one with respect to two different gradients. So DH is of degree one with respect to differential forms, because it's of the form uh, dx alpha, dx d by dx alpha, so it's uh, degree one with respect to differential forms. And this one is degree one with respect to the gradient here, which, uh, which comes from the gradient of uh, a shift degree of this vector space. Uh, sorry, vector bundle. So it means that we, we have actually a bicomplex uh, with two bi gradients. Uh, and then uh, the total sum. Um, is a differential with respect to the total grade, and this also squares to zero. Uh, now, what can we say about functions of degree r on jet k of a shifted by one? Before, uh, as, I, as I said they, uh, for just as I said before, so functions of degree r on a shifted by one can be regarded as uh, r cochains on gamma a with values uh, uh, in f x. And the corresponding chevalier Lindbergh is nothing but the QA. Now uh, we have the same here, but uh, instead of uh, multilinear with respect to functions Kachin, we have uh, Kachins which are differential, multi differential operators on gamma A. Uh, and this multi differential operators, so the Kachins are again taking values uh, in uh, Fx. So it can be regarded like this. Uh, now uh, functions. Uh, uh, so if you do the same uh, for C shifted by one, uh, then functions here can be viewed as differential cachains on gamma A, but now taking values in differential forms on uh, omega X. Uh, and we can integrate now, uh, now this over X. So, uh, and like that, we'll obtain differential cachain taking values in, in, in some field. So here, the chevalier and Berg differential view with still uh, Q, uh, so the KJ prolongation of uh, uh, QA, and here it's uh, more complicated. So uh, we know that uh, taking integration is the same as taking the uh, class of equivalence modular the, the divergences or exact uh, forms and forms. So we should take the top degree part of the form and take the quotient modular dx, uh, so the exact forms, because the integration of exact forms is zero. Uh, the integral of an exact form is zero. Uh, and then uh, let us um, use the fact that dx commutes with dh like this. So if you apply, 
dx to this cut chain, which take values in differential forms, it's the same as we have first applied dh and then take the cut chain. And this, uh, this immediately gives the following result, the differential cut chains on gate gamma a, uh, where gamma a is considered as a Lie algebra, are, uh, uh, is the same as the first term of the spectral sequence uh, defined before. So we have, uh, as I said, we have a bicomplex here, dh plus qa. If we take the first spectral sequence, uh, uh, there's a bigradient. If we take the first spectral sequence, it means that we first compute the cohomology with respect to dh, and then the second spectral uh, term of the spectral sequence, we compute the qa cohomology inside this cohomology, so in this direction. So the first uh, term of the spectral sequence gives us the space of cachains, uh, uh, taken values now in, uh, in the field. And uh, the Chevalier cohomology is the second term of the spectral sequence. So the sec uh, second we should term take uh, the QA cohomology inside this cohomology. So uh, it's kind of uh, funny. So uh, if you want to compute, uh, if you want to compute uh, uh, the Chevalier cohomology of the Lie algebra of sections of some Lie algebra, uh, but not for all cachains, but those which are uh, multi-differential operators. Then it's nothing but uh, uh, taking this, uh, this picture, as I said before, and computing the second spectral sequence. Uh, in, uh, in fact, uh, what I want to say that sometimes it's much easier to compute the cohomology of the total differential than the second term of the spectral sequence. Sometimes it's the same. For instance, there are some paper uh, of, uh, there was a paper of uh, Maxim Grigoryev and uh, Glenn Varnish uh, where they proved this local and then we proved globally that in some particular cases, the spectral, this uh, spectral sequence converges uh, in the second term, so this gives the same. But sometimes it's more interesting to take the total cohomology because uh, somehow it behaves better than this, the second term of the spectral sequence. But anyway, so this gives some nice framework for computing the Chevalier-Lindberg uh, cohomology for some cachains. Uh, so uh, now let us uh, work a little bit with this example, but in a more general setting. Suppose we have a homological degree one vector field on C shifted by one, which anti commutes with dh. So it means that dh plus q prime is degree one homological vector field again. Uh, in particular, q prime uh, can be obtained like before for, for, uh, as some jet, infinite jet prolongation of some degree one vector field on, on E, like in the Lie algebra example. Let us split this uh, into the parts, Q prime into the parts, Q prime uh, H horizontal and Q prime vertical, which is immediately evolutionary. Then one can show that the evolutionary part is again homological. And given that it's homological, it's evolutionary it anti-commutes with DH. And also it's always possible to find uh, in a canonical way, uh, a degree zero vector field psi, such that Q prime H is exact uh, with respect to DH like this. And if we also, um, it can be exponentiated because somehow unimportant. And then uh, if you conjugate dh plus q prime, we uh, kill the horizontal part of q, q prime, only q prime evolutionary remains. And this somehow nice because it means that this picture always is always conjugated to dh plus some evolutionary vector field. And this is the setting we will work uh, with uh, later. Uh, now we come to the example uh, to uh, a, a, again some general and this will be an example after that okay, okay. so the, the example actually is pretty long so <laughs> you'll see it uh, so uh, given a pd with evolutionary vector field one can canonically uh, okay here is the example here the example is, is, is simple we take any Lie algebra do what we uh, have done before for instance this algebra can be an action Lie algebra uh, and then uh, this always works. It's e very easy to see this, uh, to find this psi. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't want to bother, bother you with uh, technical details, but it's really very easy. Uh, so, uh, given a PD with an evolutionary vector field, which can only extend to C1, uh, let us call this evolutionary vector field S, uh, and this anti commutes with horizontal differential. Uh, such that the sum is again uh, differential. Uh, so uh, C1 uh, for, for a PD is naturally bigraded. 
because one gradient is coming from differential forms and second is coming from Gauss, uh, this code in physics, so the degrees of the fiber, uh, so it's called the Gauss number. Uh, and the dh and s uh, have the by degrees one, zero, and zero, one with respect to this gradient, and the total differential uh, has the total gradient one. So this is the picture which corresponds to uh, gauge, gauge PDs, and I will give you an example later how it looks like. So in the, again, in the case of gauge PD, we have dh, uh, which is the horizontal differential, some s, which is, which is an evolutionary homological vector field, and this is, uh, has by gradient one zero, this is zero one, uh, and they're anti-commuting. So this is the case uh, of a gauge PD uh, corresponding to yeah, gauge PD corresponds really to some PD. So uh, now a gauge pre-PD is a Z-graded Q-bundle, uh, considered as a graded Q-manifold, uh, with the canonical degree form degree and the canonical Q-structure, the drum differential. Uh, gauge pre-PD is called contractible if a fiber over T-shifted by one X is locally trivial. This is just the same uh, as I said before. So this, uh, this, uh, there is an equivalence reduction from E T-shifted by one X to T-shifted by one of X. So it's always possible to find contractible pairs. And they will give an example of contractible pairs in just in some minutes. Uh, so a gauge, uh, now I, I actually I repeat what I have done uh, in the last lecture, but uh, in, in, in other category. So before it was, it was a category just of Q bundles. Now it's, it's a category of Q bundles over T shifted by one, one X. Uh, but this basically is uh, just, just a very simple generalization. And we have, then, we have an equivalent reduction uh, if uh, there, is, there is a bundle structure here and uh, uh, the fiber is contractible. So there's a global local section uh, and the fiber can be contracted to this global local section. Uh, to, uh, sorry, to, to this global Q section. Uh, so the equivalence relation generated by the equivalence reduction is called the equivalence of gauge pre-PDs. Uh, two gauge pre-PDs, this is the same as for Q manifolds, are equivalent if and only if there exists a third one such that the two are its equivalent reductions. Uh, so, and uh, the example which was before, uh, we, are, uh, we have some, um, uh, some jet bundle, uh, dh, and an evolutionary homological vector field s, and q is dh plus s, so it's a by graded situation. It's called a standard gauge PPD. Uh, and gauge PD now, uh, this is the basic uh, basic notion here, is uh, is, is a gauge PPD which is equivalent to a non-negatively graded gauge PPD, and this equivalent to a standard gauge PPD. So it means that uh, it, it comes up to an equivalence from some differential equation, and also the negative part of the cohomology is vanished. It means that, in fact, it, uh, this um, standard uh, gauge pre-PD is obtained uh, by gluing of uh, Kashul um, uh, derivation and some, um, some Chevalier-Berg type derivation. And now I will give you an example, because otherwise it's maybe difficult to follow. So this is the Ma Maxwell equations uh, as a gauge theory. So let me repeat uh, the classical part. So we have independent variables, xi, uh, dependent variables, ai, and this corresponds to actually to one forms. Uh, in fact, all this uh, can be done for, for a curved uh, non-local Riemannian manifold. But uh, actually it's not written uh, well, so that this part of course is, is very general, so this is just the Maxwell equation, but I mean, so the, uh, the second part was not done yet in the uh, global case. So I will show only in coordinates. So we have independent variables x, i. So the dimension of the base is n. Normally it's four, but it can be done for n, for instance. So the dependent variables are a, i, and this corresponds to coefficients of some one forms. And the ghost uh, numbers, so degrees of a, i is zero. So it's still classical. And the action functional is like this. So this is uh, the square of the, of the curvature. So fi is just a curvature. Uh, later on, we'll, later on we'll, we'll denote ai comma j, uh, so the j derivative, uh, total derivative of ai. So in, the, in fact, this is nothing but aji comma i minus ai comma j. And this is the curvature. 
Uh, now uh, let's compute the equations of motion uh, of the Maxwell equations. So this is the standard formula for them. And this, the equations of motions are the following one. So the sum dj fij uh, equals to zero. Or one can write f i j comma j, the sum over all j's equals to zero. And this is true for all i's. Uh, now uh, let us, uh, so okay, this gives some differential equation. Uh, let us, uh, we can take the infinite prolongation of this differential equation. So let us construct the casual re resolution of this equation. So uh, to do this, we introduce another variables, a i star. Uh, so the ghost number of a i star is minus one. And the Cauchy differential, so the differential of degree zero uh, elements must be zero because there are no degree one elements. And for a i star, this gives precisely the equations up to, up to the uh, minus, but this the convention. Uh, and then, then we extend this as an evolutionary vector field. So delta applied to dx i a i star equals to the jet prolongation. So it means that in fact, uh, the new jet variables will be a i star and o d x i capital applied to them. And delta applied to these uh, jet variables will give the jet prolongations of our equation. This is how the revolution, uh, resolution works. We should somehow resolve all, all jet prolongations. And uh, one can show that delta is acyclic, because it's Cauchy type, uh, acyclic except the degree zero. And the degree zero cohomology gives functions on the equation manifold. And the equation manifold is given by this, so it's, it's given by the Euler-Lagrange equation and all uh, the jet prolongations of it. So this is resolution of the functions on the Maxwell, Maxwell equation. Now, uh, there are also gauge symmetries. Uh, and we can introduce them independently. So for that, we have, uh, we introduce a new dependent variable of ghost one and the differential gamma. Now uh, at the moment we- uh, I, have a, yes? I have a question. If you go back uh, to the previous slide. Uh -huh. So you say that the, um, the so delta is mm -hmm. cyclic, uh, except in degree zero, but uh, unless you add uh, the, um, the anti fields for the for the ghosts, you have non trivial cohomology in degree minus one, I think. I mean, this is uh, so this is a causal resolution, but you need a causal tape in, in the, for Maxwell. Okay, maybe, uh, maybe you're right because somehow uh, there's also C star which works like this. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. I think, I think I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost, yeah. Correct. almost correct. There should be C star. I agree with you. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, yes. Uh, this somehow remains from the previous picture. So, uh, you're right. This, the, there is uh, A, A star, C star, A and C. You're right. So, uh, I, I, I will fix this in the file then. Uh, so, and the uh, gamma, uh, the differential gamma works uh, uh, like this. So this gamma AI equals to DIC and gamma of C equals to zero. And this generates uh, the following gauge symmetries. And the gauge symmetries as it was before in the uh, previous, uh, previous lecture. So this commutators uh, of gamma with degree minus one vector fields. Uh, and now the Maxwell uh, equation that the BRC, and now, uh, so that's using the uh, remark of uh, Igor, which is totally correct, we should add some additional coordinates, C star to make it, uh, otherwise it's, it's not true agree. So uh, we should add some additional coordinates C star, so it will fix this. But uh, modular, uh, uh, modular this um, casualty extension is true, so this is still a differential. Uh, so we take, uh, now we have independent uh, variables xi, for i goes from one to n, Dependent variables a i of ghost zero and i star of ghost minus one and c of ghost one. And the differential, now the combination of delta and gamma, we call this s, and s a i equals to d i c, s of c equals to zero, and s uh, i star equals to this one. So this gives, uh, this is nothing but delta. Uh, now let's consider Q, which is dh plus s, such that qxi equals to theta i, qai equals to, this is dh of ai plus ci, which is uh, gamma. So actually this is the sum of uh, delta and gamma. Uh, and now uh, uh, we can work uh, with this. Okay, so um, the, uh, the coordinates here are, uh, the coordinates on the jet space are uh, ai 
and all uh, dx i capital of a i, so all partial uh, all total derivatives up to any order, uh, a i star, uh, and all partial uh, total derivatives up to any order, uh, and c and all partial derivatives uh, sorry total derivatives up to any order. Uh, but now we can introduce another jet variables. Uh, and uh, again, you're, you're right here, we should also have C star, just to make it uh, really casualty. Uh, so uh, we take, uh, just instead of this, we, we take other uh, coordinates. Um, uh, so we take um, O A star, and now Q of A star. And uh, when we get rid of, of this, we obtain the uh, equation manifold. Then we take the symmetrization, uh, sorry, the symmetrization of, uh, uh, symmetrization, okay, so uh, the symmetrization of uh, A, J, and all the total derivatives, and Q of them, and then C mean, uh, C mean which we define later, and P, which will be a symmetrization of the curvature terms. So uh, the, uh, okay, this, uh, this is the, uh, then we decompose uh, the new coordinates, jet coordinates, into the two sets. So the set one, uh, consist of the first uh, uh, of these coordinates. So, and, and you see that they're already um, combined into contractible pairs. So these are some coordinates and Q of them, some other coordinates and Q of them. And A, uh, here the round brackets, is nothing but the symmetrization of J, comma, uh, partial de total derivatives up to some order, and then symmetrization with respect to all indices. In fact, uh, all jet coordinates correspond to A splits into two parts, uh, those which are coming from the curvature and those which are, uh, which are uh, symmetrization. And later we'll get rid of all the symmetrization parts. And the second uh, set is the base coordinates X, I, theta, I, then C minimum, which is uh, like this, this is of the following form, and then P, uh, which is obtained and the symmetrization of the trace less part of the curvature and uh, total derivatives of the curvature. We somehow should uh, get rid of the trace of f. Uh, and now uh, one can show that q, okay, so just for the first set of variables, obviously that q applied to this gives this one, and q applied to that gives zero. q applies to this gives this one, and q applies to that gives zero because q squares to zero. It means that the algebra generated by these coordinates is closed under the action of q. And moreover, we already uh, combine this into the contractible pairs. Some coordinates and Q of it, some coordinates and the Q of it. So somehow, uh, when we get rid of these contractible pairs, we immediately obtain an equivalence reduction. Uh, and then uh, the other coordinates uh, of this form, uh, where F uh, prime is a traceless part of F, uh, and P is the symmetrization uh, of F prime. So here, actually, uh, the symmetriz uh, symmetrization with respect to second index of the curvature and the other indexes corresponds, correspond to the total derivatives. Uh, and then one can show that, uh, okay, Q X I is theta I because Q comes from the DH in particular. Q of C uh, minimal can be written like this. So there's some computation. Uh, okay, not, not that complicated, but still, still kind of interesting. Uh, and if you apply Q to P I J1 and so J M, this is again a combination of P's and theta's. So we see that the algebra generated by this coordinates X, theta, C minimum, and P is again closed, closed under the Q. So in fact, it means that we have a splitting of the uh, algebra into the direct sum of two algebras. Uh, not, 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 not correctly, as I said. But, uh, okay, so there's, there's a subalgebra uh, generated by these coordinates, which is closed under the Q. And that, uh, there is a bundle structure of the whole jet bundle over it, such that the fiber consists of contractible pairs. And this is an equivalence reduction in the sense as uh, I defined in the previous lecture. Uh, and when we combine all these, uh, all these um, uh, coordinates, we obtain, in fact, what is called the minimal model of the Maxwell equations. Uh, Igor, especially for you, in fact, uh, really it was not, uh, not uh, the whole picture because the whole picture should be also consistent with the symplectic structure. In fact. For that reason, we should have stars for C. It's another reason for the Cauchy tape, by the way. <laughs> right. And here, as I said, uh, we should also add C star and Q of C star, and this will be also annihilated in the same way. So uh, again, only this will remain in the, in the minimal model. 
So you're right to make it Cauchy uh, Okay, and then this gives a minimum model uh, of the Maxwell equation. So which is uh, which is an equivalence reduction of the Maxwell equation considered as a gauge PD. Uh, so but before, uh, the, uh, the Maxwell equation was gauge PD in the standard sense, sense so it was really a PD. Uh, and now, we, at some moment, we forget, as I see, at some moment, we uh, forget about the uh, by gradient. So we, we combine both DH and S together. Uh, we for, uh, forget about the by gradient, and we can forget about the splitting of Q into parts DH plus S, because, in fact, uh, these uh, algebras, the, the first one and the second one, are not closed under the action of DH and S simultaneously. They are closed only under the action of Q, which is DH plus S. This is important. Somehow we forget about grading by grading and work only with the grade. And then we can find uh, the minimum model uh, of the Maxwell equation, which is now looks like that. So we just forget about uh, the P is coming from the curvature terms. So we have just dependent variables, which are PI, J1, so JN, they're symmetric with respect to the synthesis. And the Gauss number of it is zero. There's also C minimal, and the Gauss number of it is one. And we have the action of Q like this. And also, there's an algebraic condition. So uh, P must be, uh, so if you take the symmetrization of P with respect to all indices, it must be zero because P is coming from the curvature, as we see. And also, uh, it must be traceless because uh, we, uh, we got rid of um, the Maxwell equations. Uh, okay, so. Uh, you see that the minimal model, which is uh, somehow, in some sense, it's also nice because it's, uh, it's smaller, uh, it can be treated algebraically. Uh, this is no more uh, a differential equation in the usual sense. There is no by gradient, there's no DH anymore. But still, still there is Q, there is the bundle structure over X, uh, and everything else is uh, just but in, in that graded category. So now we have two categories. So the first one consists of standard gauge PDEs. So they are by gradients. They have by gradients. Uh, the decomposition of uh, Q as DH plus some S. Uh, uh, and the second one uh, have only gradients, uh, only Q, which is degree one with respect to the Z gradient. There is a forgetful functor from the first category by gradient to the second one, uh, which is just forgets about the by gradient and consider the total gradient. Uh, and this is a functor. Also, this functor, one can show that this functor respects the equivalence. So if there are two equivalent standard gauge PDs, or you can mean them as just PDs, just usual gauge PDs in the usual sense, uh, those which are written in any textbook of annoying company, for instance. Uh, and this, for the second one, uh, we do not have uh, this structure. There are no more jets. There are only Qs. And there's forgetful functor from one to another one, which respects the equivalence. But there is also canonical functor acting in the opposite direction. So this canonical functor acting from uh, gauge PDEs, which are exist in the Z graded category to Z cross Z to, to the by graded sense. And for that, we work as follows. Suppose we have a gauge PDE, which is a Q bundle over T shifted by one X. Now let us consider the differential equation, which uh, uh, computes the Q sections uh, of this bundle. So those super sections, local Q section, those supersections, which are Q morphisms. And this gives some first order differential equation. Uh, yeah, it's, it's already close, I know. Uh, Chinese and, law. Uh, sorry? No, no, uh, let's, uh, I, I, guess, uh, I guess maybe even five minutes, so I'm, I'm close to finish. Okay. Okay. You started so, later. Yeah, I'm started a bit late, that's correct, but I'm close to finish okay. anyway. So the, there are, uh, so we have two pair of phantoms. So, uh, well, again, so given any, uh, Q, Q bundle over T shifted by one of X, we can look at uh, Q sections of this Q bundle. And this is the first order gauge PD. Uh, sorry, this, yes, this is the first order gauge PD. Uh, we, we can forget uh, about the uh, by gradient. So, well, uh, if it's a gauge PD, uh, in the usual sense, it's by gradient. Now we can forget about grade, by gradient and come back. And we obtain again the Z graded case. And it turned out that this pair of functors gives an equivalence of two categories, which are obtained by localization of the categories of the standard gauge PDs and gauge PDs over the corresponding equivalences. So in fact, it means that if you take uh, a standard gauge PD, uh, forget about it by gradient and obtain a usual gauge PD, and then come back uh, uh, to this differential equation, 
uh, this new differential equation as a gauge PD will be, standard gauge PD will be equivalent to the original one. So if you take uh, the localization of two categories by the equivalence reduction, they will become equivalent. Uh, so again, more, more precisely, suppose we have uh, the jet space of local section for super bundle of X together with degree one homological evolutionary vector field X whose negative cohomology are vanishing. Uh, this describes a PD with gauge symmetries in the usual sense. Normally, S is obtained by the homological perturbation of a couple of homological degree one evolutionary vector field. As I said, uh, so there, there are some Kashul resolution, which gives the property that the uh, negative cohomology are zeros or Kashul Tate resolution. And then there's also some Chevalier-Berg type, type uh, differential gamma. Then we somehow combine them by use of the perturbation theory. And what we obtain is the standard uh, gauge PD. Uh, so the second evolutionary differential can be, for instance, Chevalier and Berg for some, uh, or more complicated. Uh, now let's consider the corresponding Cartan distribution on the superjet space. Uh, we obtain Q, which is DH plus S, and then we can forget about the bi-gradient of the total space. We obtain a gauge PD, which exists only in the Z-graded category. Uh, now, uh, this allows, for instance, to work uh, with this new object, just forgetting about the bigrating structure. For instance, before I computed the minimal model of the uh, Maxwell equation viewed as a gauge PD, uh, forget by forgetting about the bigrating structure. Otherwise, uh, it's, no, it's not a minimal model, otherwise it's not equivalent to the original one. Just to, to find the minimal model, also the minimal model exists for Einstein equations, for many other equations. Actually, it's an interesting question how to find them. Uh, not uh, everything is clear. Uh, uh, okay, then uh, just to find the minimum model, we should forget about the bi-gradient. We should forget that Q is the sum of dH plus S and start working with Q itself. And then uh, we, we, we are more flexible from this moment. So we can, uh, uh, for instance, if you want to compute the Q cohomology, uh, uh, like for instance, uh, as I said, the Q cohomology in the Leo algebraic case, um, are the same as uh, the Lie algebra cohomology in some sense, Lie algebra cohomology of the um, space of sections, then uh, it's, it's good for somehow to be more flexible and may, maybe find an easier model for it. For instance, the minimum model, because the Q cohomology for equivalent uh, Q bundles will be the same. Uh, before we could work only in the Z2-graded case, now we can work in Z-graded case either. And then the equivalence reduction preserve the uh, all important properties. For instance, all associated natural cohomology are the same. Uh, and as I said, it's always possible to restore. So whenever we have uh, something which comes from the standard gauge PDs, we can again restore the standard gauge PD uh, by use of the uh, parent formalism or the superjet formalism. And uh, so the, well, Maybe the last few minutes, I just show the very simple formula for this uh, parent formalism. Uh, so parent means superjet, but for some historical reason, because it, this was used by Grigoriev and Glenn Varnish at some moment, we just used these words. So suppose we have a gauge PD. So it's a Q bundle over T shifted by one of X with the Chevalier, uh, sorry, with the Durand differential. And here is Q on the total space. It's a Q bundle. Consider the super jet bundle of local super sections of pi. Uh, then Q admits a canonical jet prolongation in the sense as, uh, as I explained before. Uh, and it splits into two parts, the horizontal and vertical. The vertical part is evolutionary. The horizontal part, surprisingly, is uh, nothing but dh for the new, uh, new jet bundle, super jet bundle. Uh, now we can make take the same uh, the infinite jet prolongation for the Euler vector field which gives the gradient z gradient here take the infinite jet prolongation again split into horizontal and vertical parts like this and uh, it turned out that this are they are uh, commuting so we actually this immediately gives two gradients uh, and also there are only two relations so before this was the relation that epsilon the commutator of epsilon with q was q and now we have only two relations of the four components. And this means uh, that there are two, uh, two gradients and Q infinity, which is the sum of Q infinity horizontal Q plus Q infinity vertical evolutionary, is uh, 
uh, is a uh, it, it gives gives a by context. Uh, and now uh, QH infinity can be identified with the H and QV infinity can be identified with S for for the standard gauge PD and this standard gauge PD exactly computes the Q sections of phi. So that's a very very simple uh, picture how to obtain it. Uh, okay, so thank you for the attention. That's uh, that's uh, that's all. So uh, and what is not what uh, what I did not tell about is the following. So uh, the same can be done in the context of Lagrangian theories. So for instance, we can start with some Lagrangian Q theory. Do the same. So consider the for instance the BV, which will be now uh, symplectic of degree minus one. Uh, do the same, forget about the bi-gradient, uh, consider the graded case, and then we can restore uh, uh, up to an equivalence the original uh, Lagrangian, but then the, the equivalence will be a little bit uh, more complicated, but here we will uh, we'll use the technique of uh, AKZ, somehow generalized, and, and just a bit more, but this is not uh, the subject of my talk today. So for that, I will need more, maybe one more hour. So let's okay. thank you, Peter. Thank you. So uh, I will. Uh, so let me tell you that I will fix some types which I found now. Well, it's it's always uh, it's always better to look. Uh, it's, uh, okay, it's much more efficient to look at the, at the file during the talk, right? So you, you usually notice the types or mistakes which you not seen before. So I will fix some types and I will send this to to one or to whom. Uh, yeah. Right. So, because uh, as you see and that uh, this is uh, people in the seminar. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. To to everyone, right? Because uh, in fact now it contains all uh, all uh, bo both lectures, all everything which I was talking about in, in these two lectures. So and then up to up to the end today. So and I will okay. fix the mistakes and send it to you. Yes, that's a very interesting and uh, uh, I mean completely new for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's maybe it's not easy to uh, to uh, for for instance I'm pretty sure that for uh, Igor it's uh, it's not complicated, but uh, okay. So if he, if, if he ask me if ask me privately and uh, listen the second time he will understand probably everything, right? It's, but for for others it's uh, it can be maybe new, but still. Uh, what is interesting that working with jets can give some uh, new features. Yeah, so <laughs> that the Vinogrado part is a more or less classical. But the, so that you say that's a, not on the PD, but you consider only a certain uh, type of PDs, then you can do the theory, right? Yeah, so yeah. What? Somehow, at some moment, what is important that, uh, okay, before that the part where we work with PDs, it's, uh, it's maybe not exactly in this language, but it was not understood. It, it was understood before us, of course, because that's how different people, like for instance, annoyed uh, its school, his school, sorry, uh, and Krasilchik uh, and Verbavetsky and others. And I'm pretty sure that Igor knows that. That's how I understood it before. But what is new here is that sometimes we can forget about the differential equations and start working in the Z graded category. And this gives new features, like uh, we can simplify. The module find it the minimum module, but still very uh, a lot of properties are the same, and this is uh, this is new. I mean, it's it's not it's yes. not so, so, standard. So, so, horizontal complex as uh, Mark van der uh, Boski, yeah, they uh, do kind of horizontal complex, but uh, so you say this uh, is more or less the same, uh, but it is a different language. No, no. Uh, the, okay, as I said, there are two categories. The second category, the first category is standard gauge PDs, and the second category is gauge PDs. Yes. Uh, uh, so the first category is more or less known, maybe in some other, using yes. some other language, but it's, uh, it's known for people to who work in this. For instance, I'm pretty sure that, uh, for instance, Luca Vitaliano could recognize it, and maybe some yes. other people. But the second category is not that known. And these people who are working with differential equations, they uh, usually do not forget about uh, the differential equation structure. They do not mix the H and S together. So this is what first was inspired by mathematical physicists, but then understood in this form by us. Mm -hmm. So this is new. I mean, the second so category is new. Geiger, that's a class of Geiger, is a subclass of the PD, right? Yeah, there's sub, uh, okay, so there's a subclass of uh, PDs, which are called gauge PDs, and this is something which is equivalent uh, to the uh, gauge PDs, but in another category. So for instance, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. So, okay, let us thank the speaker again. If nobody has uh, any question, Ma. Well, I, I have some, some questions. Mm -hmm. uh, um, well, for, maybe a comment. In, um, 
uh, you didn't introduce uh, another grading of uh, vertical forms. But, uh, you know, it's no, no, I, I do not use vertical forms. Here. I understand, but I mean, you can, you can always. Yes, add yes, there will be sort yeah. one. Agree, and actually, and vertical forms are important for the Lagrangian, uh, right. Lagrangian yeah. part, because so, here in the Lagrangian we can involve everything. For instance, yeah. this uh, symplectic currents and uh, symplectic uh, form and everything. So mm -hmm. then, then the uh, the vertical forms are very important. Mm -hmm. right. So j just a comment uh, that if you consider a tri three graded complex mm -hmm. uh, of uh, Functions on sufficient on shifted tangent space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and so on. Uh, then you have uh, so the, this, uh, including the Q, Q vector field. I mean, mm -hmm. this this tri graded complex I think was introduced in the paper by Enoch and, Bar and Barnage. I mean, before a lot of this formula. Yes, was, sure, was, sure, was, sure. Was yeah, it's yeah. it's an old stuff. Agree. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I have a, a more specific question. Uh, I didn't quite follow. What is the notion of minimality for these minimal models? Okay, this, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it, it's a good question. In fact, it's, uh, I'm pretty sure that the same as the Sullivan's model, but I, uh, I don't precisely remember the argument for that. But I think so, it's... Uh, but why is, uh, why is the, the usual formulation of, of Maxwell equations um, uh, not minimal? But because it can be, it can be less, right? We somehow take the reduction of it. If it, if it can take a reduction, it's not minimal. <laughs> okay, or, or may, maybe it's, 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 it's a good understanding that it's, if there is an equivalence reduction to a smaller model, then it's not minimal <laughs> in this sense. Mm -hmm. Well, if but you, I, I, I'm if making you, up if now. Stay, I, I, if you mm -hmm. stay in the category of, of um, um, what did you call it? Uh, so the standard category. standard yes yeah but uh, that, so, sorry in your in your notion the standard pd is does that uh, uh you will you allow maybe can you go to the slide where you define standard mm -hmm. PDs? because i don't, I, I don't mm -hmm. remember what the, the precise definition um yeah sorry Uh, so, uh, uh, PD, yeah, let me try to find it. Uh -huh, standard yes, gauge okay. PD, yes, this one. So, a, a pre PD, uh, uh, pre just, just a Q bundle over T shifted by one of X. It's, it's yeah. not, it's, it's uh, too broad. It's, it's not yes. that interesting. Mm -hmm. So, it's called the standard pre gauge PD. And so, what is a standard PD? Standard, uh, standard equivalence is uh, just the same as uh, usually Anor uh, uh, and SCOR are using. So we just locally we get rid of contractible pairs with respect to S. And this is equivalent to, to the equivalence uh, of Q, uh, Q bundles which preserve uh, the bigrading. Sure, okay. But uh, I, I'm still trying to understand on the slide where do you get rid of the pre part? So you, you define standard gauge pre PDs and w uh, so as ah, uh, yeah, here I do not require here I do not require that the negative cohomology are zero. Okay. So if you require the negative cohomology are zero, uh, uh, I will get a standard gauge PD. But I, I, I'm okay. sorry, it's just some technical details. Okay, okay. So I think in, inadvertently you gave an example of a, of a pre PD in your uh, treatment of Maxwell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gave an example of pre PD, but uh, it was a correct uh, remark of you that you just in order to make it really. Uh, so this one is not uh, is not completely correct. So for that we need right. to add C star, yeah. and then it will be yeah, precisely. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, yeah. so and uh, it was a bit a bit of cheating. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> and if you remove standard, so what what changes? So if you remove sta different. standard, then uh, there's no bigrading, so no decomposition of DH plus S. This will be only Q, which okay. covers the DRAM on, on X. Uh -huh. uh, but how is it, uh, in what sense is it still a... Uh, I mean, you, so you, you show this result where you can recover the PDE from, uh, from the... So you can recover a standard PD from a PD. Yes, uh, a standard PD from a PD, 
No, they just no, no, no. From if if you require, recover from a PDE, that S will be just zero. If it's if if, if there is no Kashul uh, differential, no gamma, this will be zero. Of course. Mm. But uh, okay, that's a uh, good way of thinking about PDEs. Uh, okay, that's um, I didn't tell everything, but still, uh, the good way of thinking about PDEs is some jet bundle together yeah. with a Kashul state resolution. Okay. This is better than just usual PD because not every PD. Uh, okay, if you already nice have a Kashul, yeah, it's a nice PD. Let's right. say like this, right? A nice, nice gauge PD is DH uh, is uh, where delta is combined with gamma, so this already. So that's what you call with, standard. With negative, with negative okay. cohomology, and, and this you, is standard. So if you allow, so if you change Q in such a way that it uh, mixes the horizontal and yes, the, yes, uh, both degrees, it's no more, it's no, no more standard. No longer standard. Yes. For instance, minimal model is no more standard. Okay. So before, you're right, I started with standard gauge pre-PD. If we add C star, it would be gauge PD. Exactly. Uh, but without C star, it was standard gauge pre-PD. And, uh, 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 and then I, and then I, okay, as a standard gauge PD, maybe it's not possible to, okay, it's still possible to reduce it. We, we can, yeah, it's, of course it's possible. We can get rid of the uh, Kashul resolution and, and just come to the, Mm, uh, to the equation, so uh, to, to the on-shell uh, gauge, uh, gauge PD, mm. right? So, uh, because but, uh, so if you stay in a standard world, mm -hmm. right, um, then Maxwell equations and the usual formulation is already minimal. Is that not? Yes, true? yes. Oh, I see, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So your yes. minimal models are smaller yes. because- It's minimal, it's smaller, but it exists okay. only in a different category, which will mix the grids. Okay. So I, I, that's what the point that we are now we are more flexible. Okay. And still uh, a lot of basic properties, for instance, Q cohomology uh, mm -hmm. natural complexes will be the same. Mm -hmm. So if we want to compute uh, BV BRC cohomology, mm -hmm. we can do this for yeah. the minimal model. I think this is what uh, Barnett, Brandt, and Eno did in their in their long yeah 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 sure 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 this even this though they didn't say it explicitly like, like yeah yeah that's that's precise they okay. did not formulate this okay it's precise as i said this comes from mathematical papers and mathematical physics yeah. okay. and in fact there's uh, certain things which are for instance not not well done here uh, so this example for the um, uh, minimal model for uh, for maxwell it's done in coordinates but in fact, it can be done uh, also for, for an arbitrary curved mm -hmm. Riemannian manifold, but that's a bit more, more work, which is just yeah. we did not do it. Uh, because physicists nor normally work in coordinates and for them it's sufficient. But, <laughs> but in, in fact, this length, which is very geometric, it's, it's adapted to global cases. It's mm -hmm. not local, of course. And uh, you mentioned that uh, so minimal models for, for example, Einstein equations have been computed. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah. known. It's also, actually, this minimum model is also due to uh, Barnish and uh, right. okay. Brandt. I don't, I don't remember who, but that's the same school of Anon. Right, okay. Uh, okay. And uh, again, it can be inter interpreted in this way. I, I did not uh, write this example because otherwise it would be other 20 minutes, but, mm -hmm. <laughs> but still, this also exists. And also should be done, uh, also done on the incursions, should be reformulated in the global, uh, the global version. Because uh, uh, let me tell you that this, uh, this uh, description is, is very global, it's, it's very geometrical. But uh, how it was uh, done by phys mathematical physicists, it's not geometrical at all. It's not obvious how to do this without coordinates, for instance. So in, uh, in four dimensions, there's a very mm -hmm. nice geometrical treatment of what would be equivalent to, in your language, to the minimal model of, uh, of Einstein equations was done by Anderson and Torre in 90, or something like that. So they uh -huh. used spinners. Oh uh, yeah, could be. It was adapted to four dimensions, but in higher dimensions, uh -huh. I think it's only the coordinate treatment of uh, annoying uh -huh. of the, the school. Uh -huh. Maybe uh, maybe I should look at this because uh, well, just to not uh... and and the, is it global or local or in coordinates? Well, it's always local in. Oh uh, uh, yeah, if it's local, like in then the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah, if it's na neighborhood in, in coordinates, it's well known. Let's see. So what is, uh, why this is nice? I mean, why? Uh, but, but it's, uh, it, it, uh, I mean, it uses the geometric structure of the metric in a... Okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I, I, I you want to, you're telling me that the metric is not flat, right? No, of course not. Ah, okay. If the metric is not flat, then it's, uh, yeah. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, 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 sorry. Uh, no, um, the, uh, uh, for the for the Einstein, in, even in coordinates, the metric is not flat. 
No, sorry. It's the metric is supposed to be flat for the mass flow here. Yes. So what yeah. I done for the mass flow, it was uh, for the, uh, just for the flat met metric, right? So just take the sum. Otherwise, it should be f uh, wedge star uh, star f, right? Okay. So I mean, the, the different approaches one can take. So some are mm -hmm. more geometric than others. So yeah, yeah, right. But uh, anyway, so this all this formalism is adapted. It, it it's some it's some lack of uh, examples. I mean, a lack of global examples, which somehow feel because mm -hmm. not completely easy to do. But still, there are some examples which can be interpreted. You, okay, okay, there's some language which is very geometric and very global. There are some examples which will be nicely interpreted in this language using this language, but they are local in coordinates. Mm -hmm. And the question how to find global examples. So the first one we needs to generalize this to the global case. And it's, well, it's not complicated, but still some lengths it's not done. And second, maybe find, find some other examples, mm -hmm. right? Just to, to somehow justify all the theory. <laughs> So I didn't mean to monopolize the discussion. So no, no, no other problem. people who have questions, please go ahead. But maybe you are the only one who was not killed by my lectures. <laughs> <laughs> I have a naive, I don't know, half question, half uh -huh. remark. Uh -huh. uh, there are people who describe Maxwell equations in differential forms, which mm -hmm. is already a little bit geometric, right? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't remember the details, but basically you fit the variables into components of differential forms in a smart way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there is a little bit of guessing in this. So I suppose that one can just read this off from what you describe. I am pretty sure, yes, but it's not done. Yeah, okay. This, this maybe from, from what, what, what you say, I don't remember what happens with symmetries there, but maybe what you do will help to understand that. No, no, the, the, the symmetries, everything is very standard. I mean, so this, this classical part, of course, can be formulated for, for a curved manifold. It's not a big problem. Mm -hmm. So there's are just one forms in a curved manifold, and then this component of one forms. Then uh, the Lagrangian is uh, F, uh, the curvature F, which is a two form, wedge star F, right, <laughs> with some coefficient. And the Maxwell equation is, uh, is how it should be, right? D star yeah. f, uh, d d star f equals to zero. Right? <laughs> it's it's very yeah, easy yeah. how to do. But uh, and and again, symmetry is also also pretty easy, right? So a uh, a plus uh, a goes to a plus d c, where c is a zero form, right? So it's, it's completely obvious how how to do this. I mean the classical part, but still, what is complicated is just. So otherwise it's not complicated. But what is complicated is how to find uh, this decomposition of variables into the two sets, somehow disjoint because both are Q, uh, Q closed, uh, and how to find the minimal model. This is what I don't know how to do. Uh, I know how to do this in, co in coordinates. It is still, still kind of interesting because this involves uh, Cauchy operators. Uh, and if you want to do this, uh, treat this in, in in all details, this will also involve Jan Tableau and all this stuff, right? But uh, still, it's even in coordinates, it's, it's kind of interesting. But how to do this globally, it would be even more interesting. <laughs> because here the metric is, uh, can be curved and so on. But maybe it's also, uh, maybe it makes more sense just to make the, the most general example. Uh, the, um, how is it called, A, uh, Einstein, uh, Einstein Maxwell, right? I mean, it's, it will be probably better to, 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 to combine all this and find, because uh, the minimum model exists for Einstein Maxwell, for instance, or even more for it exists for Young Mills, Einstein Young Mills. Mm -hmm. And this example would be interesting, but uh, I'm pretty sure that very lengthy, so it, it will be not possible to explain it <laughs> here in slides, but still. I, even this is kind of interesting. I, I just recomputed myself. It took some time because it was not. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For instance, this formula is kind of nice. <laughs> no, I mean, this minimum model was known. I just uh, recomputed to to see how it works in details. But of course, it's, it, it belongs to, it was computed either in 90s or in the very beginning of 2000. No. Yeah, maybe something like that. But I mean, people probably did spell it this way in this language. So it still makes a lot of sense, I guess. Okay, Thanks. so the main point is uh, what actually what was explained somehow in, in our conversation with uh, Igor, that uh, we can work with standard gauge PDs and then uh, in the standard gauge PD, sometimes what we have is already minimal, so we can make it small. But if you forget about the bigrading, 
and what work with this uh, in the Z graded category, then they can somehow reduce it even further and make it smaller and smaller and maintain this minimum model, which is sometimes easier to work with. And uh, actually what is, uh, what is also interesting how to do, do this in the presence of Lagrangians. And then it's uh, kind of interesting because we can do the same, just reduce to the minimum model, uh, then somehow restore uh, the original equation up to an equivalence on this. It's, it's even more, more interesting how to do this. And actually somehow, uh, it's funny that somehow uh, instead of, so in mechanics, this gives, uh, so in, in classical mechanics, this gives uh, the first order formulation, the Hamiltonian formulation out of Lagrangians, more or less. Uh, uh, then if it's not known, if it's degenerate, then it's uh, more complicated. Uh, if it's known more mechanics, then it would be related to, I guess so, because I did not really, uh, I understand all these details, but it's related to this, what is called multi-symplectic structures. Because instead of uh, symplectic two forms, you'll get three forms, four forms, and so on. This will play, play a similar role. Because if, if, not, if it's not mechanics, but two-dimensional, then uh, the three forms somehow plays the role of a two form, and so on. So it involves everything somehow. So are there any more questions? Is anyone alive here? <laughs> I know that Vladimir is, is here. Uh, Van is here, right? Was, was yes. here, right? Oh, no. Interesting how to say. I, 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 I even I want to discuss with you privately later, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, but sir, after you send me the... Yes, right, I, I should fix uh, the typos I've yeah. seen here. Yeah, I, I, I think that's... Uh, yeah, then um, you can discuss... Uh, okay, so let, uh, let us thank speaker again and then uh, to the next meet, uh, next Wednesday, okay? Thank you. Okay. So now, yeah.